Welcome to the Mac Draft floor plan demo. I'll show you how to create a fully furnished A-frame floor plan. The screen you see is much smaller than the Mac Draft screen, of course, so please make allowance for the fact that images get fuzzier when they're shrunk. The Mac Draft screen is sharp, large, and clear. Check out the toolbar and you'll see that I had selected the arrow tool and now I've selected the line tool. Now I choose 90 degree lines and then I select the 90 degree rotation tool. It's very handy. One click and the object is rotated. Now I select the text tool. Where would we be without titles and labels? Next I select the rectangle tool. Drawing all four room walls at once is very handy. The lower left toolbar contains a line weight attribute selector, and I find that the best line weight for walls is 3 when the scale is 1 8 inch equals a foot. I set this scale and turned on the ruler display in the layout menu. Now we're ready to begin. The rectangle tool is still selected, so I click and drag out a rectangle about 25 feet square a normal A-frame size. Next, I drag a 15 foot by 25 foot rectangle next to the first to represent a second floor, which is a loft in this A-frame. Notice how I quickly drew the outer walls and now I'm already drawing inner walls and for that I selected the line tool. After walling off the kitchen, bedroom, bathroom, and living area, the next step is furniture. MacDraft includes a media assistant for selecting objects from libraries, and here I'm using a library full of useful furniture. I just click and drag the object I want, and it will automatically be the correct scale. Cool, huh? Since I need several floor cabinets, once I have one in place, I press Command-C to copy it and drag it to a new location. I do this several times. Next I get both a refrigerator and a stove from the library and place them in the kitchen. Now I put wall cabinets above the floor cabinets. I copy, drag, and paste again since I need several. Notice that the 90 degree rotation tool lights up momentarily when I'm pasting the third cabinet in place. This is because there's a tiny handle on the front and I surely did not want that against a wall. I finish the kitchen by adding a sink to the middle floor cabinet. Then I move on to the bedroom and drag in a bed, a nightstand, a chest of drawers, and a vanity. Next, I put a bathtub in the bathroom. Then a floor cabinet, a wash bowl, and a toilet are added. Now it's time to put a nightstand and two beds in the loft. Of course, a loft is useless if there's no staircase going up to it, so I get fancy and put a spiral staircase adjacent to the edge of the floor. I remember to copy the staircase and drag it to the living room. The edge marks the division between the loft floor and the open area above the living room. From this same library, I now get the front steps. Next, I get a desk chair, a desk, a coffee table, a wing chair, and a hutch from the first library and place them in the living room.
Then I go to another library and get a ceiling fan to keep the air moving in this A-frame. Now I go back to the first library and get an easy chair and a sofa. I'm showing these pre-rotated to special angles, but in truth, to do that rotating, one merely needs to use the rotation tool, which is just to the right of the selection tool. Now I add a dining area by dragging in a dining chair and making three copies of it, and rotating each copy appropriately so it faces a table. You'll notice the 90 degree rotation tool lights up several times during this process. I add the table now. I add a chandelier to the living room. and then go to a doors library and get a sliding door and put it at the top of the front steps. I also get a folding closet door for the big walk-in closet to the right of the bedroom. And then add a door swing object. These types of objects let you not only add hinged doors, but also see where they will swing. You don't want them hitting furniture. Now I proceed to a library full of windows and I grab a bay window and then a window box for the kitchen. Then I grab a regular window and place it in the kitchen wall. Next I copy it and put the copy in the bedroom wall. Now I make another copy for the loft. I copy the window a couple more times to put in the living room wall. A final copy goes in the bathroom wall, but to do this I click on the 90 degree rotation tool. It's time to create a TV. The libraries contain an old style TV, but I want a modern flat screen, so I select the rectangle tool and drag out a TV rectangle at the place the tan chair and sofa seem to be facing in the living room. but it doesn't look right without a color fill, so I locate the fill color part of the lower left toolbar and select black. Now it looks right. I wonder what's on now. It's time for some labels. The text size defaults to a nice size, so once I choose the text tool and start typing, the labels look fine. They may be a bit weird in this small video, but in the actual Mac Draft program, they look very nice. First I label the open space next to the loft and above the living room with the word open. Then I label the loft and then use the word floor to point out that there are floorboards there. Next I label the entire upper floor with the words loft level and the first floor I label main level. I go on to label the bedroom, living room, stairs, and kitchen. The kitchen label has to be rotated so I use the 90 degree rotator tool for that. Finally I label the entire floor plan as A-frame. I hope you've enjoyed this simulation. I imagine it's encouraging to see that a person can create an entire furnished floor plan in a mere eight minutes. Thanks for watching.